I don't know if they were fluent in the language, but they delivered the lines in Spanish absolutely perfect in this one. So natural, it's like they spoke it all their lives. And keeping up the clown routine throughout this as well is just a level of professionalism you don't see anymore. Legends, we're back for another little review here on Queen's Age Media. This is Laurel and Hardy once more. And in this one, we're finishing off Dusk 18 in the Laurel and Hardy box set, which is a load of short films about married life and co starring Anita Garvin. And this one is called, now please excuse me, I may butcher the life out of this title because. I can barely speak my own language, never mind anyone else's language. Uh, but this is a Spanish edition. Uh, it's called Los Calaveras. Again, sorry, I may have mispronounced that completely. But this is an excellent little film. And once again, if you get hold of this box set and you're skipping free movies and checking them out, do not, under any circumstances, you know, skip over the the foreign speaking versions of Laurel and Hardy movies because there is quite a bit of footage in them that were not included in the English speaking versions. Uh, for years, I've had this box set for a lifetime now, and for years I did indeed jump across the uh, foreign language movies simply because I thought it was just a dubbed over version of the English version, but that is not the case. Stan and Ollie also speak their own lines in the films. And I know I'm going over old territory by saying this, but it is an art that I have never seen before. You know, usually when a film gets dubbed into another language, they just simply re-record and dub, you know, the lines over the top of the original lines and uh, not the case in these movies as they go the extra mile to do this as you know credit where credit's due they were known as two comedy clown characters but you know that extra piece of professionalism is just you know they were so much more professional than I think they ever got credit for so this one here Los Calaveras is basically two short films rolled in the one we've got a feature length pretty much close to a feature length movie here uh, a Spanish speaking version of both Be Big which was the last review on this channel Feel free to skip back and check that one out. And uh, forgive me, the name has escaped me. Laughing Gravy, Spanish speaking version of Laughing Gravy. Uh, it is an immense little short film as well. Now, if you want a more detailed version of both of those reviews, I have them on this channel. Do a little search, you'll find them. Uh, but basically, and be big. Stan and Ollie are taking their wives away for the weekend and they get a call from their lodge saying that you know the lodge has prepared a surprise stag party for them and you know try and get away from the wives come down and Stan and Ollie come up with the idea you know Ollie pr pretends that he's sick bad with his nerves tells the two wives to go on to Atlantic City for the weekend, he'll feel better in the morning and him and Stanley will catch the first train down first thing in the morning, giving them the opportunity to go to their party. Uh, the entire film is basically them trying to get changed and leave the house to get to this party. It doesn't happen because it's Laurel and Hardy. You know, very rarely things go their way. And uh, yes, turns out that the waves actually missed the last train to Atlantic City that evening and they have to wait till the morning as well so they 
return to the flat, fighting Stan and Ollie, getting changed to leave. And uh, yes, things don't go well for them. They grab a couple of shotguns. Stan and Ollie are hiding in a bed that falls up into the wall. The two wives take a shot. <laughs> the bed collapses through the outside of the building and lands in the street. That's where B Big ended off. Um, there's a little fade uh, to connect B Big to Laughing Gravy, but not speaking the language, I couldn't understand. You know, the titles on the screen, I didn't understand what it said, but you know. What I take from it to be was, you know, after Stan and Ollie get kicked out of their house by the waves, they go to spend the night at a boarding house. And that is where Laughing Gravy starts off. And that short film, they also have a small dog with them. And the dog's name is Laughing Gravy. So they're in this boarding house at night. They've sneaked the dog and the landlord is, you know, forever come into the room because of noise that they're making and he finds the dog chucks it out into the street and Stan and Ollie being the big hearted people that they are can't bear to see this little dog in the cold their beloved little friend for life and Oliver goes out to retrieve the dog after the landlord goes to bed and accidentally locks himself out so there's a whole routine of trying to get the dog back into the house along with Oliver and you know they're tying bed sheets together hanging it out the top window of the house lifting the dog up and trying to do the same with Ollie he falls into like a big drum of water at one point and eventually Stan just goes down and lets him in uh, things go from bad to worse in the situation where the landlord is you know, constantly coming back and forth to the room and you know, it's that movie is there's so much happens in it guys. Uh <laughs> I'm trying to cut this very short to keep this video a little bit short, this episode a little bit short. But Laughing Gravy is an intense little film well, a hilarious, brilliant little film. Well worth checking out. The dog at one point ends up on the roof of the boarding house, Stan and Ollie have to crawl up the chimney, or Stanley claw crawls up the chimney to retrieve the dog, and Oliver comes out the window on the top floor and tries to, you know, reach up to get, get the dog from Stanley to bring it down into the room again, but ends up actually getting trapped on the ledge of the window, and the window slams shut, and he has to climb onto the roof as well. And both of them have to come back down the chimney. And uh, yes, Stanley gets down okay, along with the dog back into the room. And uh, Oliver is stuck on the roof. But he tries to get in through the chimney. It gives way underneath him. Downstairs, the landlord hears a noise going on. So he opens his, up his window outside to see what's going on. And the blocks from the chimney drop down and knock him unconscious. Uh, Oliver eventually gets back into the room after getting trapped in the chimney and Stanley has to trail him out by his feet and uh, the landlord comes up, catches them in the act and tells them that they're out first thing in the morning. Um, the film ends off with Stanley getting a letter from a family member that has left him an inheritance but the thing is this family member has always believed that Oliver was holding Stanley back and the only way he's going to get this inheritance money is if he cuts all ties with Oliver and uh, there's a whole sequence at the end of the movie and it's very very well done especially in the well it was very well done in the English version and very well done in this one but not understanding the language I didn't get the same appreciation for it but Stanley is caught but in the situation where you know his financial troubles could be over but at the same time this is his lifelong friend he doesn't want to leave him but Oliver is like you know do your thing you know go your own way if you have to but he's 
trying to play the guilt trip a little bit on Stanley. But Stanley packs his bags, he's ready to go, he's got the, the check and everything in his pocket. And he's ready to leave, he's got a suitcase, he's got laughing gravy underneath his arm, he's ready to leave. And Oliver comes across, takes the dog from him, and like, he can't leave me with nothing, sort of thing. So he goes over to the fireplace, and he's got laughing gravy under one arm and he's petting the dog and Stanley is like you know the guilt on his face is unbelievable and then he makes the decision he's not going to leave and he pulls out the envelope with the letter and the cheque with the money in it and rips it up and Oliver's like oh yes my friend my amigo I think I believe he says in this movie but uh he's like you know I can't believe you're choosing me over the money sort of a thing but Stanley goes over, takes the dog off Oliver, and he's like, I nah, couldn't leave, laughing gravy. And Oliver loses the plot and starts to wreck the house. That is essentially where the film finishes off. That is an, a very, very quick skim on the surface review of this movie. It is excellent. Again, as I said at the start, Stan and Ollie doing all their lines, speaking the language, brilliantly done. And it's very, very natural. It's not like someone that's, you know, I don't know if they were fluent in the language, but they delivered the lines in Spanish absolutely perfect in this film. So natural. It's like they spoke at all their lives. And keeping up the clown routine throughout this as well. It's just a level of professionalism you don't see anymore. Um, yes. And again, the Spanish version of Be Big and Laughing Gravy, there's some extra footage in there that wasn't seen in the English-speaking version. So again, do not jump over this movie, just because it's not the language you understand. Stan and Ollie came from a period before sound movies. They did a lot of short, silent movies before this. They came from the silent era. Their comedy is very visual. You don't always have to understand what is going on to appreciate their comedy. So definitely, don't jump across it because you don't understand the language. They are actually brilliant. And as I did say in the review for Be Big, I actually preferred that version. Or was it Big Big? Big Big. <laughs> was it P Big? No, it wasn't. It was Blotto. The review for Blotto. They did a Spanish version of it called La Vida Nocturna. And I actually highly preferred La Vida Nocturna over Blotto because the comedy in that movie, the comedy routines were a little bit different, a lot better than I thought the English version was. Really enjoyed that movie over the English speaking version one. So there you have it. Just because you don't understand the language doesn't mean you're not going to understand the comedy. Uh, if I go back to watch Blood O again, I'd probably watch the the Spanish version of it over the English version because the comedy was just, and for me, for my money, it was just so much better than the English version. So, yes, these movies are absolutely brilliant, and the box set is worth whatever money you're going to pay for it. It is extremely cheap now to buy, and you know. The majority of these movies are, you know, you can probably watch them for free online somewhere, but, you know, these days of, you know, people just watching stuff for free, that's killing the industry completely. Uh, that's a bit of a thing that I have a little bit of an issue with, as uh, people saying that they're huge fans of movies, but they're not willing to pay the money to watch them support the industry even though these movies are really really old like these this one came out in 1931 that's of an extremely old movie at this point uh, but spend the money buy the box set the physical copy of it you know if you're a collector of movies you enjoy comedy these guys are absolutely brilliant on having this in your collection you know, it's a jewel I will never get rid of.